blasphemy. This is madness. Madness. This is Oath of Glory Paladin. Paladins who take the Oath of Glories believe they are destined for greatness in heroism and spend their time training themselves and their companions to be ready when destiny calls. And as part of being a Paladin of the Oath of Glory, you take a couple of tenants. I like these tenants. I think they are very evocative, but they're not restrictive to Oath of Glory Paladins. Actions over words, being strived to known for your feats of greatness rather than your tales about them is very cool and it's very motivating for a character to overcome great obstacles. Challenges are but tests is really cool. Being courageous and ready to take on any challenge, not only yourself, but encouraging your allies to do the same is something that I can totally see a paladin who follows this oath doing. Hone the body, I could totally see a oath of glory paladin doing push-ups while you're making camp or something like that to make sure that they're toned and ready when that destiny calls. Discipline the soul is an interesting one because it adds another Another layer to these paladins having your own discipline so they don't get in the way of your feats and those of your friends is something that I can really respect about the Oath of Glory Paladin and I think it adds a very interesting dynamic to the characters you're creating. Now on to your first mechanical feature and that is your Oath Spells. Your Oath Spells are Guiding Bolt, Heroism, Enhance Ability, Magic Weapon, Haste and protection from energy, compulsion and freedom of movement, and commune and flame strike. I think some of these spells are really good, one of the most notable being Haste, which is undeniably a very powerful spell, especially as a paladin. You can get a lot of mileage out of that. However, Magic Weapon is kind of not that great of a spell in my opinion, especially since you're a half caster, so you're going to be casting it when other magic weapons are theoretically available at that level. However, Enhance Ability is a really good addition because it adds the Paladin a little bit of utility outside of combat, which is something that the Paladin is kind of thirsting for at times. At third level, you also get your channel divinity options, the first being Peerless athlete. As a bonus action for the next 10 minutes, you get advantage on athletics checks and acrobatics checks. In addition, you also can push, drag, lift, and carry twice the normal amount of weight as you normally could. And your long and high jump distance are both increased by 10 feet but still require the cost of movement. The other use of your channel divinity is inspiring strike, which means after you use your channel divinity feature, you can as a bonus action, distribute a number of hit points to allies within 30 feet of you, which also include yourself. The number of hit points is equal to 2d8 plus your level in this class, and you divide it among those creatures. So these are two very interesting options, and I don't think either are particularly powerful. Sure, I can see Peerless Athlete coming up in some situations, but I do think it's going to be circumstantial at best. And then Inspiring Strike, I just don't think is enough healing or temporary hit points in this case to warrant a Channel Divinity use. But when you compare it to things like the Twilight Cleric, which with one use of their channel divinity, they're granting temporary hit points equal to 1d6 plus their level to every creature within 30 feet every round for a minute. It just makes this one seem kind of less powerful. I do like the idea behind it, the inspiring strike, being able to hit someone with your devastating strike and inspiring your allies to do better and do those great deeds is very cool. I just wish it was a little bit more powerful. If this was normal healing, I wouldn't have that much of a problem with it, but because it is temporary hit points, and since those are becoming more and more common in 5e, it's going to be more in that situation where you're deciding whether you want these temp HP or another set of temp HP. At seventh level, you get Aura of Alacrity. Your walking speed increases by 10 feet, and when an ally starts their turn within five feet of you, their walking speed increases to 10 feet until the end of the turn. At 18th level, the range increases to 10 feet. 
Man, do I think this aura is very lackluster. I can't help but think of the situation where the Paladin runs in first and leaves all their allies in the dust. So if you roll high on initiative, you have to wait for all your buddies to be next to you so you got all can rush in as this ability is intending for you to do. I have no idea why this aura is so very small that, it, that your ally has to be within five feet of you. I wish it was bigger. I wish it was the standard 10 or even 30. Being able to only increase it to that 10 foot range at 18th level is too little too late. I am really disappointed with this aura. At 15th level, you get glorious defense. And whenever you or a creature you can see within 10 feet of you is hit with an attack, you can use your reaction to grant a bonus to their AC equal to your charisma modifier, potentially causing the attack to miss. And as part of that reaction, you can also make an attack of your own. You can use this feature a number of times equal to your charisma modifier per long rest. I think this ability is very cool and I do think it is a powerful ability for the cost of one reaction you're adding potentially plus five to your or an ally's AC and making an attack roll at them. I think it's a really solid ability and it totally supports the idea of an Oath of Glory Paladin. At 20th level, you get your last ability called Living Legend. And as a bonus action, you get the following benefits for one minute. You are blessed with an otherworldly presence, granting you advantage on charisma checks. Also, once on each of your turns when you make a weapon attack and miss, you can cause the attack to hit instead. If you fail a saving throw, you can use a reaction to re-roll it. You must use the new roll. Once you use this bonus action, you can't use it again until you finish a long rest or unless you expend a fifth level spell slot to use it again. So we're talking end of the line abilities here, and I do think it is a cool ability. So I won't harp on it too much because I really feel like it exemplifies the Oath of Glory Paladin. Being empowered with your own great deeds, whether they're true or not, is a very cool idea. And I think being able to automatically hit on an attack if you miss is very cool. Being able to say, oh, actually, I hit on that attack. It's very fun at the table. And also being able to reroll a saving throw, kind of having almost that minor legendary resistance is pretty cool as well. I do think that the advantage on charisma checks is kind of circumstantial, but being able to be better at persuasion, intimidation, and deception is pretty cool as well. However, only being able to do it once unless you expend one of your glorious, very precious fifth level spell slots is kind of a hit or miss for me. I think it could have been better, but I don't think it's awful. So that is it for the Oath of Glory Paladin. If I were to rank this Paladin subclass against the other Paladin subclasses currently available in fifth edition, I would give this one a 1.5 out of five cauldrons. Man, I know that's a really low score, but I'm really not the biggest fan of this subclass. I do think narratively it's fairly cool. Uh, it's not really my cup of tea, but I can see where people are coming from when they want to take this kind of character direction. However, I don't think that the subclass particularly supports it that well. It kind of feels all over the place with that peerless athlete and that glorious defense. It just feels like the identity is kind of fractured. And I see where they are coming from with all of the abilities. I just wish they were a little bit stronger mechanically and thematically to kind of tie it all together. I think that aura ability is a really big miss for me. And I think glorious defense is actually pretty cool, but it just comes way too late in the game. And it's just too little too late, I think. So what do you think? Do you think I'm being a little bit too hard on this subclass or do you agree with me? I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments down below. If you like this video, please consider hitting the thumbs up button or subscribing. Either would help us out immensely. And if you like this style of video, this is actually part of a series that Ben and I are doing where we go through all of the subclasses in Tasha's Cauldron of Everything and give our own thoughts and personal rankings to each of them. I'll link the playlist up above. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you on your next short rest.